Hey, how are you? Not too bad. How you doing? Pretty good. Just are we live? Sweating, sweating over here in Bali. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. Uh, I'm out here in Montreal, in Canada. So oh, I'm not nice. sweating. I'm not sweating as much as you are. But we've had a great end of our summer. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is summer now, isn't it? True. Cool. So, um, Paul, you're from Lander. I am the lead audio engineer uh, at Lander, and yeah, I cool. manage the audio team over here, and we work on the technology behind it. So we do research and development for what you hear and how your tracks are mastered on Lander. Awesome. I've used Lander for a couple of tracks, and um, it's definitely come a long way. Sounds really good, actually. Well, thanks for saying. <laughs> thanks for no saying worries. that. I mean, like it did. It did before, anyway. But it, it, you can tell that you can tell um, um, it's it's gotten a lot better within like the last couple of years. Yeah, we work really hard every day on getting it uh, the best it can possibly be for our users, mm. and uh, it's a it's a pretty interesting job uh, in terms of uh, audio for production sure. and audio technology. Mm. Do Very we cool. uh, do we know if we're live yet? Have we gone live? I'm not sure. Checking it out. I guess so. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So a bit about myself. I'm um, I'm an Aussie artist. I've been producing for twenty years now. I started producing. Um, oh, I've been, sorry. I've been DJing for twenty years. Been producing for about maybe seventeen. Um, I grew up in a rainforest uh, with um, rave-loving parents. So that's how I that's how that's how I got into it. Nice. It was, um, was uh was brought up in a circus, and it was just a coincidence that I won the Speedport Circus Recordings competition. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And con um, congratulations for winning. So you won the Beats in School Circus Recording. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. I'm um, absolutely over the moon about it. It's like a dream come true. Honestly, been working towards this for the last seventeen years or whatever. So, yeah. It goes to Stuck show in. that if you put a lot yeah. of hard work in, that your dreams will come true. Yeah, they truly have. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm over the moon about it. So I'm just gonna get stuck in for the next year, being mentored by Yusef and um, the Circus Recordings crew, and I'm just gonna take the most out of it and see what happens. Yeah, can you yeah. talk a bit about uh, about what you're what you're gonna be up to for the next time in the mentorship? Yeah, so um, I mean, a lot of a lot of big um brands have got behind us like um native instruments have just donated um uh native oh, sorry what is it complete control no complete ultimate which is just like huge you know what it is yeah and, of course uh, yeah yeah um so i've just been getting stuck into that i mean i'm getting sent um sent like uh different bits of hardware that i get to get to have a play on and then um and then review at the end of each month so I've got a bit of work ahead of me, but I absolutely love it. And um, yeah, so that's going to be me for the next for the next year. I've chosen to move back to Australia to um, to my rainforest house to really focus on everything. Just lock, lock myself lock myself away. <laughs> so I understand that you're currently living in Bali. Yep. Yeah, I'm in Bali now. Um, there's a big volcano that's threatening to erupt, so I'm I've got to ticket out of here in a week. <laughs> Well, biggest, good. Cost, biggest cost I'll get out. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I think I'm sure everyone's going to be rooting for you to get out of there safely. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll be right though. It's okay. So the native instruments uh, gear, have you been using that for a while, or is this something that you're just going to get in, be getting into now? Yeah, no, I've I've been using. Um, I I bought uh, a machine when it was just machine one, and with that I got um, I got complete ultimate nine, I think, and um. And that just, yeah, I've pretty much just been using that the whole time for my main production. Like, I'll just get, on, I'll get on the machine and I'll, I'll just punch out a beat so quickly, just really get the idea out. And um, I bought a machine studio um, and upgraded to that, and that was just, that's just next level. I can't wait to see, see the next one that they've just released. Yeah. So is that something that you're going to be getting your hands on? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Give a little <laughs> plug here. Maybe so. something will come your way. Uh, <laughs> can really you tell me so. a bit? I'm sure a lot of people are interested in your workflow. Like, what what is your creative process like? Um, 
So I, I, I try to, I try to uh, punch a little bit of music out every day, at least even if it's only an hour or so. But um, if I have an idea, I'll, I'll make sure I get it out as soon as possible. Like, you know, I'll, I'll spend a good 12 hours on the computer. I'll go to sleep. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll just keep, I'll just keep at it until I get the idea out because I feel like if I don't get the idea out quickly, um, then it'll, it'll go and like the, the mood, the mood will change. And, and you know, if, if I'm still working on the same track a week later, it'll be a completely different track. So, um, so yeah, I'll try and I'll try and get the idea out, like the main idea out in the first three days, and then I might give it a break and then mix it down a week later when it's when my ears are fresh again. All right. Yeah, but you know what? That that doesn't always go to plan. <laughs> I'm working on a track now that I've been working on for like six weeks, and that's pretty much because I didn't get the idea out quick enough. And it's 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 pretty much been three different tracks within itself now. <laughs> I'm sure you like a lot of producers and uh, and creative people that you kind of there's some ideas that you have percolating and then you kind of just leave those sessions maybe you have stuff that has been sitting there for years and you never oh. go back to and you just jump on the new thing buddy i've got an I've, I've got a graveyard i've got hundreds and hundreds of songs that that are just sitting there just loops and beats i actually went back um like two days ago i went back to some of the stuff i wrote in like 2009 i was like whoa this is pretty good like started digging up a few others and like oh like I could, I could definitely, definitely start working on this again. Nice. Yeah. How about the track that you wrote for the competition? Yeah. Um, How did yeah, that come about? Uh, How did that come about? Oh, so a friend of mine came over and he, um, he, he was, he'd been working on a track for the competition. He, um, he wanted to borrow my, my um, sub, my Moog Sub 37 to, to write a bass line with. Cool. And so I lent it to him and, he, and he's like, oh, yeah, it's just it's for this competition. It ends in five days, but you should give it a go. I was like, okay, cool. Take my Moog. <laughs> and, and I quickly punched out a track like overnight, like really, really quick. And, um, and then I, you know, I mixed it down and I only submitted um, the DJ mix like nine hours before the competition closed. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah, I only had five days to do it. And I went, I'm pretty sure um, – I'm pretty sure – uh, entries were open six weeks before, so I was pretty stoked. To, yeah, it just goes yeah. to show what you can do when you're uh, when you have the right motivation. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, I was really into it, and um, yeah, just 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 like the idea was there, and I was like really motivated, and like you know, it was a big opportunity, and I just stuck it out and and got it done, and look what happened. I like I like, I like the track as well. You know, I'm pretty I'm pretty um I'm pretty particular. I'm I'm pretty um. Yeah, I'm pretty hard on myself when I write tunes. You know, I was like, oh, I'm never good enough. I'm sure a lot of people are like that. But For sure. And you, you, you've, uh, just got to, you've got to love your work. If you don't love your work, then yeah. Yeah, you, you suffer from the perfectionist syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, yeah, totally. I'm learning. I'm learning to accept. <laughs> so <laughs> is that pretty good? So the track is called Rhythm is Key. Yep. And do you think that's uh, that's kind of representative of, of what you're where you're at now in your musical journey? Totally, totally. Rhythm is key. And you always, describe, uh, sorry. And you describe yourself as a as a uh, tech house producer. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, there's definitely uh, like old rave influence in there in all my tracks. Like, I, I was a psytrance producer since like that's what I started as, like producing psytrance and playing at all these huge raves around the east coast of Australia, even when I was like 14 years old. And um, I was quite I was quite big in the scene. So um, like some of those sounds have always come with me through my journey. Sure. Like I've, um, I, was, I was writing, I still write like pro quite progressive house, I guess. Um, and now it's sort of like sort of uh, molded into a more like groovy tech beat, I guess with like quite almost dark, dark funky un undertones. Yeah, it's a great track. I was just listening to it again this morning in my studio. That's where I am right now. I'm in uh, Montreal. Um, that's based, That's where Lander's based out of. But um, yeah. I'm sort of on the west side of the island right now, but our headquarters is pretty much central in the middle of the island in Montreal. Yeah. And nice. um, yeah, I was just kind of pumping it out here and making my dog bark. 
<laughs> and he was <laughs> he was digging it. Um, I'm sure I'm sure at the end uh, people will be interested in um, in uh, checking out your track. Um, do you know where they could reach you and where where people can get your stuff? Um, yeah, you can get me on Beatport. Uh, my name on Beatport is Taya uh, AU for Australia in brackets. Or you can get me on Taya Sounds on SoundCloud or on my Facebook page, Taya Sounds. Um, that track isn't out yet, though. Um, I don't know when that's going to come out. I haven't really thought about it. But, uh, that's a, I'll probably... that's a good teaser. Yeah, yeah, true. I've actually got an EP coming out on, uh, on um, an Aussie label called Basic Records. So that'll be due November. And then hopefully I can get stuck into some stuff with Circus Recordings. That'd be sweet. Yeah, it'd be so sweet. And have you been, uh, maybe if you could uh, rewind a little bit and tell people how you got into music and leading up to being on a label at this moment, like the sort of steps that got you there and maybe some experience that you could share in terms of maybe lessons learned or mistakes, sure. you know, that led For you sure. to, to where you're at now? Absolutely. Um, okay, so I, like so many producers, I was just making loops and loops and loops and then just leaving them. Um, and that happened for years. I literally only finished, I only started finishing tracks about four years into making music. And then once I finished a track, I was like, okay, I've got to finish it. And that means finishing your track and mixing it down so you can play it out. If you don't finish a track, it's just going to be another, another track for the graveyard. So my biggest advice is just finish your song, even if you don't think it's going to go anywhere. It's the whole process that, that you've got to that, you, that you've got to practice. Like, yeah, it's um, and it gets easier, and you get and you learn like what sounds go with what, and yeah, you know. So just finish every track you start. That's 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 a rule that I have now. I finish absolutely every track that I that I start, even if I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, so I got into, um, I got into Psytrance when I was quite young. I started producing that and I worked with a couple of labels uh, in Australia and then I got sick of the Psytrance sound and uh, I gave like DJing or I gave producing a rest for a bit and um, then um, I sort of wanted to find my sound again so I moved to Berlin and, um, and sort of got my passion back. Um, when it got way too cold in Berlin I moved back to Australia and I started producing some more tech, tech stuff. Um, and I signed with Basic Records, who are uh, an Aussie label. And, um, yeah, they just they picked me up and um, sort of um, believed in me. And I just kept on sending them music. And, and they were like, oh, yeah, that's good, but it's not really our sound. So I just started making another track, sent them it again. And after a while, they were like, yeah, we like this. Make another one like that. So I punched out uh, a B-side and I did my first... Um, did my first EP with them uh, earlier on this year. So you can find that on my, my uh, Beatport or Juno, I think, both of them. But yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at now. And, um, and look what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you ever find yourself uh, collaborating with other, with other artists and other producers? Or are you basically a, a one-man show? Um, I would love to work with other people. I'd love to work with... Um, with a, a, a vocalist, actually, but I haven't found the right one yet. Um, I every time I try to collaborate with someone else, it doesn't really work out. I guess I just haven't found the right person yet. You know, um, it's like um, like you, I guess you got to find someone who does the same sound as you, because otherwise, it's not going to turn out the way either if you like it. Right. And I haven't found that person yet. So, but I'd love to. I'd really, really, really like to collaborate with someone because you can always learn something from um, from someone else. Even if they're an absolute beginner, you'll learn something from them. That's that's something that I picked up for sure. Well, well I'm sure people out there now that uh, that you won this contest with uh, Beats in School and Circus Recordings, that people might be reaching out to you and might be a great opportunity yeah. to, for you to collaborate with people. So absolutely, I've had a few people hit me up actually, and um, and it's it's definitely definitely on the same. They're definitely on the same wavelength as I am, um, uh, yeah, sound-wise, that's for sure. So, yeah, pretty excited. I mean, I've got to punch out uh, one more track for this next EP, and then I can then I can do whatever, collaborate with 
anyone. Sweet. So most of the tracks are done. You said uh, how many tracks are on this EP? Oh, it's just a two-track EP. But um, but like yeah. I said, I I um, I started I started the A side. It was sounding really good, and then um, you know, three four days later, it didn't sound as good as I thought. All but right. That's probably that's probably just me being picky. But yeah, I um, so I I've, I've changed everything in the track. It's six weeks later now. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 it, and it's 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 all it's, i think i think i'm on the right path now i think i think it's gonna it's actually sounding really really cool i just toned it down a bit and um took 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 a few layers out that's another thing i do i just keep on putting more and more and more in and then all of a sudden it's just like a big jumble big jumbled up mess so less is more yeah it's hard to cull more those sure. kind of ideas that you spent maybe hours putting in you know, yeah. a synth line or something and taking it out. But it, it kind of feels satisfying. Totally. Yeah, and yeah. You, you get just, to that you, point. You've just got to take the step. And what I do also is like I, I will, when I when I save in Ableton, I'll, I'll save it as like V1, like version one or version two, version three. So I'll have, I'll have like 35, 40 different versions of the track. Right. Um, by, by the time I've, by the time I've actually finished. And, uh, and a good thing is that you can actually you can open up the versions in your um, in your browser panel and just take old parts out. If you've got an old synth line, like you can actually just drag and drop it in, so they're never actually gone. I don't Sweet. know. I don't know. A lot of people know know that. But yeah, that's definitely handy. Well, that's the thing with uh, with DAWs and and everything. I mean, you could you could be fully operational and produce a whole track knowing fifteen percent of everything it can possibly do. So maybe yeah, this yeah. is a good opportunity to share some of your tips and tricks. In addition to the one you just mentioned, like okay. what's your work? What's your workflow? Do you have, use templates? When you start, or do you start from scratch? Uh, no, 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 no. I just start from scratch. I, I, I do. Um, I, I do have my return effects all set up. So I've got like uh, a short reverb, a long reverb um, that I'll use for maybe big, big stabs or big hits, and the short reverb I'll just sort of add almost a little bit of it to everything. You know, if I want a snare to be to sound closer, I'll I'll give it um more reverb, or if I want something to sound more further away, I'll just give it less reverb or whatever, or the other way around. Sorry, but um yeah, I've always got my return effects there, and I will also uh I'll make my track into groups. Like I'll have a kick, a bass, and then my drums will be in one group, my synths will be in one group, my vocals will be in one group, and my effects will be in the other, and that's it. And that's it. So in every track. They're the, they're the groups I'll have it in and it, it just um, tidies up your workflow a bit and then you can just, you know, you can affect um, each group um, themselves, yeah. So, so you're, sub, you're sub-mixing everything as you go and you're making your stems essentially. For sure. And, uh, and I try not to mix too much until the end um, because if, if, I have to mi if I have to mix something... Uh, within the track to make it fit, it probably isn't supposed to be there, I, fi I find. Yeah. Like, I'll, 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 I'll roll the bottom end off, um, like, my Saab and, and other things, just so they don't clash, like, with, just with a basic EQ, but that's all I'll do. I won't go and compress anything or, and you know, um, go too, too much into the mixing side of things until the song's finished. Yeah. Is that is that because you don't want to paint yourself into a corner? You don't want to make too many decisions until the end, until you know what's in there and what you've chucked out, perhaps? Yeah, I feel like, um, well, for for one, my computer will slow down too much by the time I'm finished. Um, yeah, right. uh, another thing, like I said, is um, if you have to EQ something out so much, then it's probably not supposed to be there. Um, and... Another thing is, I guess, just getting the idea out as soon as 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 soon as you can, so it's fresh. Uh, if I and like, if I start mixing something down, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend hours on it, <laughs> try to perfect it, and that's time that should be um, focused on, um, yeah, the, the the track, not the mix down. So you try to you try to act maybe wear two hats and you sort of act as the artist and producer on one side and then you revisit it just as the mixing engineer in the end. For sure, definitely. And I won't I won't mix in the same session as um, as my as when I'm producing. Oh really? Uh, yeah, I try not to because um, like 
I need to give my ears a rest. I, I like I need to give the trial. I, I almost won't even listen to the track for a couple of days until I've, my ears are fresh again. Like I'll, I'll have some, I have some downtime. Like I'll go outside and I'll actually do, do normal, normal things. <laughs> Not just sit in my studio for days on end. What are the That's, normal things you like to do out there in Bali? Ah, uh, you know, lay in the sun, <laughs> eat food. <laughs> There's not heaps that you could do here. Uh, right. Surf, those, those sort of things. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's but, a pretty cruisy life in Bali, but um, but yeah, no, it's so, nice. It, it, Bali is good. It has its ups and its downs. I mean, like for one, you're in this beautiful country. It's um, it, it's the, the weather's amazing. Uh, on the other side, uh, there's a volcano that's about to erupt. So, yeah, pros and cons, I guess. There's that. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how many guy. people can relate to that. So hopefully yeah. uh, hopefully you're you're safe there. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll, we'll be all good. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, the, 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 old, the old earthquake here and there stirs thing up, things up a bit. Do you... Um, <laughs> Do you find that, um, how do you know that your mix is done when you're, when you're working on it? And how long does it typically take you to mix one of your tracks? Uh, I, you know, um, I, don't, I guess it just gets to a point um, and you, you just know and you're like, I can't, do, I can't give it anymore. Um, and, and I'll usually mix my track down. It'll, it might take maybe, I might spend like three days on it. If I really want to, I can, I can mix it down in one day, but that's, that's a big session. Um, and it usually, if I mix it down in one day, I'll come back, I'll come back the next day and go, Oh, what was I thinking? Well, oh, that's got to change. And, right. you know, but, um, I guess playing your track on as many different, um, speakers as possible is a good thing. Like play it in your car. Your car is a really good place to, to, um, to monitor your tracks with, cause it's all closed off and there's yeah. no other sound going on. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll even, I'll even. Um, bounce it down, bounce a copy down, put it on my iPhone, put my ear, earplugs on, go for a walk and listen to it that way. I've also got a, um, I also bought a, uh, uh, the Bose SL, SL3. Yeah, the Bose speaker. Anyway, you know, just the, the, the Bose speakers. And I'll, um, I'll use that to, to reference my tracks on heaps because I don't actually have monitors here in Bali. I've just got my, I've got my um, Audio Technica headphones up there. So, that's that's a that's a good one to listen to your tracks on sure. as well. Sure. What? Uh, uh, and I guess uh, a lot of people are mixing on headphones these days, and I think, yeah. you know, they're either working out of uh, an apartment that they don't want to mm -hmm. treat, you know, pimp out mm -hmm. in terms of with acoustics, or they yeah. don't have the cash to do that, or they're traveling around the world and they have to work in on the tour bus or in a hotel room. So mm -hmm. how long? Like how it. long did it? How long did it take you to get used to working on your headphones? Um. Well. I've got in, I got my head I got my Audio Technica headphones, which are really great headphones, by the way, and they're only like two hundred dollars. Um, but I I mix on uh, Adams AX sevens at home and um, in a in a treated room, and I would uh, I'd probably use my headphones more than what I would with my Adams, um, and it, it happened pretty quickly because you can just hear everything that's going on, like you, if you, if you don't have a treated room, like I find if if you don't have it like a treated room or like a, you know, a normal size room. Like a lot of people have their studios backed into corners and that, and that's just like the worst thing ever. If you don't have a treated room, then your headphones are like other go for sure. Like that, these are, these I've, I've bought so many like bits of equipment um, in my time of producing and my headphones are definitely like top three. I can't believe it took me so long to buy some. Um, can you, uh, I'm sure people are going to know, uh, want to know what model of uh, ATs you're using. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. Um, well, I couldn't actually tell you. It's the it's. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's the Audio Audio Technica's AX something. They're like two hundred bucks. They're All right. you know, you, 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 you could they're probably like the their go to headphones, I guess. Um, yeah, I think they might have won an award in two thousand sixteen, like best studio monitoring headphones or whatever, which is surprising because it, they went up against all like the top of the line Sennheisers and all that. So. Nice. Yeah. So, so you don't feel you mentioned your atoms, but are you working with a sub? Also, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, I am working with a sub. Um, but like, you know, I love my atoms and that, and I'll just switch between both. It's good to have both of them. It's good, yeah, it's good to have both for sure. I can't wait to get home to actually 
have have my Adams. Oh, and my new um my new opals that I that I won from the beats <laughs> from the beats in school. So I've got them waiting at home for me. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Do you, do you want to maybe uh, tell people, make people a little jealous in terms of the gear that you won through uh, through the competition? Um, it's all still coming. It's like they just keep. I just get. I just keep on getting emails. And they're like, oh, hey, from, I'm from um Serato. You've you've just won. Of, of what they give me that the new plugin. It's a great plugin, by the way. It's a it's a um it's a it's a really um really strong uh, sampling plugin. So I'm using that in uh, Ableton now. Uh, and I got the I got the native instruments complete ultimate eleven, which is huge. Um, they're sending me uh, Serato is sending me um, uh, a K two no, yeah the K the K two mixer. Oh no, that's um who does that? No, someone else does that. Um, and they're giving me uh, an, a a Kai keyboard, and just on top of that, I think they're just going to keep on rolling in. Yeah, I don't really know what to exactly. And to be honest, I didn't I didn't even know I didn't even think that I like was going to win any hardware or anything. I just thought that the whole experience was, um, yeah, was just to get um, signed by Circus Recordings and get mentored. That was the more important thing. But then all this other stuff's coming in. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is amazing. It's Christmas. <laughs> Christmas thing. came early. It's like the best thing ever. <laughs> that's all. That's all I spend my money on. I don't. I don't. I don't buy up things. You know. I don't get anything. The only thing I spend my money on is like music equipment. <laughs> you have any favorite? So just, do you have any favorite pieces of gear to use? Um, oh yeah, I, I love my new my sub thirty seven. That's amazing. Um, my machine studio is definitely definitely my favorite though. That's I use that for absolutely everything. Um, I have my first bit of hardware was a, a virus TI synth. Um, and that was really really good for making sidetracks with like yeah. I don't know if you know that. Do you know the Virus TI by Access? I've never, yeah, I've never uh, had the, the opportunity to play it. I'm kind of a oh, Korg guy. I've got a lot of Korg stuff. Oh, see, yes, yes. I haven't played with any Korg stuff, but would love to. But um, anyway, so it's just a digital um, digital synth, but it's it's just really good for techno and and Psytrance. So I sold when when I when I stopped doing Psytrance, I sold my um my Virus TI, and then I was like, oh no, what have I done? And I quickly bought another one. <laughs> so I've got that in the studio as well. I don't use it as much um, anymore. I should, but yeah, I still love it. It's good. Sweet. So Sweet. how how much are you using hardware, and how much are you in the box in terms of the the soft sense? I guess maybe with now the native instruments uh, ultimate, you'll be more in the box. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm honestly I'm I'm way more in the way more in the box now. Um, I, I, it's really hard to go past. The machine studio hey like it's just everything's just there it's just ready to go and you can just you can just find everything in there they've even got like the chord function like it's just so so easy you can just get these epic chords going with just one press of a button yeah um yeah but like I'm, I'm, i've been using obviously i've been using the, the moog um for bass it's just just got this epic rich bottom end mm -hmm. um so, so yeah i've been been using yeah, that's usually what my bass is. That and uh, Trillion, it's, um, it's a nice. bass plugin. Love, love. Yeah. I love Spectrosonic stuff. Um, Omnisphere is epic as well. I use Omnisphere quite a bit. Cool. Uh, yeah, and Trillion. And I just try to keep it quite minimal when it comes to um, plugins because you know if you've got all these, you've got all these plugins. Um, it's sort of like they all sort of do the same thing, I guess, in the end. Um, and it's just better. I for me, it's better just to study one and just get to really know it. So I stopped buying. Hell, I've got heaps now, don't I? <laughs> I've got, I've got, Seems like you're doing all right. Yeah. Oh, also, I, I, I win a um, I win a uh, uh, a course with Point Blank online. So that's awesome. Uh, I did I, I did the the, the uh, master's diploma in two thousand and. 12 I think it was with point blank and that was that was like that really helped me um, step up my game a lot yeah I would highly recommend point blank online for anyone who's serious uh, yeah in their production in, in taking the next step for sure can, can you talk a little bit about uh, about what it is and and what you learned from it uh, so it's uh, basically the 
the uh, top online electronic music production school, uh, I'm pretty sure. And um, they've got like a number of different courses. You can do like a beginner's um, guide to Ableton or Logic or um, Machine, um, anything like that, or to, to like advance them. There's been, there's been a quite a few big names come out of it, like Claude Von Stroke. Um, uh, yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure a Luna George and um, yeah, maybe Dusky or yeah, a few, a few big names have come out of there. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty yeah. So I get I get given another course for that. So I guess I'm just going to do um, the uh, sound design, so native instrument sound design. So that's another course they do there. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. And and uh, I've got a, maybe a contentious question for you in terms of mix bus philosophy. When when you're talking about mixing before, uh, oh, okay. what do you tend to what do you tend to do? Do you go pretty heavy with the processors? What tends to be on your mix bus? Uh, on my mix bus. So you you mean on my return channels? Well, on your on your master fader. On my master. Oh, okay. So, um, on my master, I would you I use uh, ozone, ozone seven. Yeah. I've always used I've always used ozone. I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, so for the track um, that you listened to, which was the uh, which I won the um, Beats in School thing from, I had um, I'm pretty sure it was it would have been like tape saturation uh, into a stereo stereo imager. So I'd always put you know below about 150 hertz um, straight down the center, and then slowly um, spread the sound out as it as the frequencies get higher um that's like really important i guess so you know the bottom end doesn't mark up your whole track uh then i would probably then what would i do probably um use mid and side compression and then uh, a bit of mid and side eq and then finish off with a limiter so yeah. uh, no no multi-band compressor in there then no no multi band compressor. I have I, on my um, yeah no, I don't. I think I I mean I guess it it works for me. That sort of that link. Yeah, but for uh, sure. I'm I'm the same way. Yeah, but I like I, you know it's just sort of what I've learned I guess, and everyone does it differently. But I'd love to I'd love to learn more more about that. Compressor compressing's always been like you know it, it took me a really long time to figure out compressing. You know, I'm sure it's like it's, everyone it's can like relate that, to that. Everybody, and you can always learn. Every day, you can learn something, even if you've been in it for like yourself oh. or myself for the last 20 years. Compression is yeah. is the ultimate. Um, oh, it does my head in. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. But it does my head in. You know. Yeah. Mm. So uh, another, I, another, sorry, another great plugin I wanted to mention was um for the PSP Vintage Warmer. That's like epic. Um, classic. Really love that. I don't know what's going on with it, but it's it's awesome. I don't know what's going on underneath the hood, but yeah, yeah, that's a that's a really good one. I like to I like to send um I like to absolutely smash that and then put it on a return ch channel. So just adding tiny tiny bits to like different um different elements in the track just to give it a bit of punch and grit. Yeah, and I was checking. I was noticing in your in your mix that you said for uh, for rhythm is key. That um, that you're not crushing it. A lot of the times that people will tend to push their track a little too much before it comes to mastering. So yeah. you had a ton, a ton of headroom in there. Do you have any tips and tricks uh, with Ableton or just outside of Ableton in terms of making sure your track has enough headroom? Um, sure. Uh, I mean, I'm not a master at it, but over my time of producing, uh, I've always sort of left maybe minus. 6 dB uh, before I would send it to get mastered because right. um, because I wouldn't I wouldn't I mean I mastered this track but if I was going to release something I would I would get I would send it away to get it done so yeah always always leave about minus 6 dB um, and um, and yeah I guess just just balance your track out as, as much as you possible yeah so if you find yourself, I guess, going a little too crazy and hitting the master bus a little too hard, you go back and group all your tracks together and then bring them down so you have enough headroom going into yeah, your master. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, that's what grouping is great for, I guess. That's um, just being able to control everything um, a lot better. 
because uh, at the end, when when it's ready, when usually when you're ready to send it off to get masters, it's it's never sitting in the right in the right place. So I'll go back and I'll I'll just have have a quick listen to each group or each sound. If anything, if anything's too too big, like I I'm, I'm always pushing my kick and my bass way way too way too far. Um, I would you I think I'll usually have it sitting my kick sitting around ten. Okay. Well, um, yeah, that was that was sort of like a. Sorry, I'm getting Facebook messages. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, that was that was always sort of like a guideline for me. Um, yeah, putting putting my kick at about uh, ten minus ten, sorry, and then and then going from there, then building that building the rest of the the track around that until it's at about minus six dB. So yeah. So you start with your drums and then build everything around that. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Kick, bass, drums, and then everything else can sit around there. Sweet. Yeah, that's one of the things at uh, at Lander that we recommend in terms of like the negative six kind of general area in terms of overall average loudness and making sure that you don't have any peaks or anything coming in. So you leave that little bit of extra room. So you're not, if this is the whole thing, you're not crushing it. You're not maxing it out and making it look like a, like we say, like a two by four or a slug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, leave, you leave a little bit of room and you have some peaks and transients that can dance around up top, but leave it so mastering can bring it up to the next level otherwise if it's crushed there's not much more you can do with it so that's basically uh, one of the common questions that comes through support at lander in terms of uh not crushing your mix yep for sure that and, is a big uh, one, yeah. and uh, what do you do for referencing in terms of knowing that your mix is done you said you listen to in a lot of different places but um do you do you check do you do a pre-master you sort of see how things are going that's that's something that um, lander is good for uh, yeah, look, I've got, I've got a great plugin and it's just, a, it's just an AB plugin and I, I will, I'll have like, you know, one of my favorite tracks sitting next to it. And, um, and, and so I'll just, I guess throughout the whole process of making, of building my track, I'll just AB and just to get, just to get the right levels, you know, like just so I can hear where everything's sort of sitting and, and by that, that's, that's a, that's a game changer. Hey, like that's, that's, that was a really big one for me. So, yeah. um, so I'll do that. And then I guess, you know, um, I never get it. I never get it right the first time. You know, I don't think anyone does, but, um, I'll just, I'll, I'll bounce it out and I'll listen to it on as many different, um, speakers as possible. I'll play it out. Um, and when I play it out, like you can, you can always hear when you play it out, what's what, where you've gone wrong or like, you know, if the bass is, too muddy or whatever so yeah what's the what's the plugin that you're using I, I know there's a few out there on the market but which which a b plugin do you use uh it's just magic ab okay super yeah. Simple. Yeah. yeah i've got that one it, too it's great it's awesome like you know it took me so i can't believe it, it took me so long to find it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, so, so so simple and so effective hey yeah exactly hmm and in terms of um, in terms of, do you have anyone that you bounce ideas off of? Do you share? Uh, you know, I know you don't collaborate with people too often, but is there like a buddy of yours or producer friend that you can say, "Hey, can you check out my mix?" Yeah, absolutely. I I send it to a, I send it to pretty much the same people every time. All right. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll actually yeah, it won't be so annoying for them now that um that I'm actually getting somewhere with my music. <laughs> but um yeah, I've got like a number of maybe like five people. And uh, and my girlfriend actually, she's she cops it like <laughs> she'll be like, babe, babe, is this good? Is this good? Like she'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, give me the headphones. So she's 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 a good reference. Um, nice for me. <laughs> so yeah. you you mentioned earlier that the uh, the track that uh, that we that won you the competition that you mastered it on your own. Um, are there any any other people that you use uh, for mastering? And what are your what are your philosophies in in terms of mastering? Um, look, I. My, Mastering is not my thing, but um, I mean, I've used Lander. I've used you guys like a, a fair bit. Um, cool. To yeah, it's great. It's it's awesome. And like I said, it's it it it's really good now. Like I I got it. I sent a track to you guys um last month just so I could play it out. And I was like, wow, this is like this sounds like a fully mastered track. Um, but as for as for mastering with like say basic records or any of the other tracks that I've released, they usually take care of that. Um, yeah, I'm 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 not not too sure 
who they use or whatever, but it always some, comes back sounding uh, crisp. Uh, I know there is one guy in Australia, uh, Klaus Hill. He's he's um, he's really good. Cool. I think a lot of I think a lot of big um, big names uh, like maybe Chris Chris Lorenzo and uh, yeah, big big tech acts like that use nice. What are your philosophies in terms of loudness? Like, do you really need want your stuff to be pushed? Do you want to maintain some dyna- dynamic range? What's important uh, to you from a final I, master? I think I, I'm not a fan of the of the brick wall. You know, I'm not a fan of that. I feel like I feel like um, there has to be dynamics in a track. Um, and I mean, any of the any of the big um, you know any of the engine the big engineers like they'll, they'll know like. Um, I use, they usually send me back um, like a limited version and a dynamic one, and I'm always gonna like I always pick the dynamic, one. Um, yeah. One that's, because that's what I like to hear. Yeah, totally, man. Like I, I don't know, I don't know how how music got to that level that it was at, but I feel like people, I feel like people, are just, like it's we're getting back to normal now. Yeah. But, yeah. If you had a few hours to go, I could tell you the whole story of the loudness wars, but I don't think anyone's interested in that. Uh, yeah, I've, I've I've read up on it a fair bit. Yeah, but um, yeah, totally dynamic all the way. And uh, so you've been doing this for twenty years. How have, how have you seen that change? Do you think it's coming back around in terms of you know people I, I, crushing it, and now they're actually the education's getting out there, and people are wanting more dynamic mixes. I think they are. I think people are like I I, I think. The last couple of years, like, yeah, that like some of the tracks they just look like blocks of bread, and um, I feel like now it's it's coming back around. Like people are getting more onto it. Yeah, I mean, I can't say the same for like full blown EDM, but um, that I don't really listen to. But um, as for like some of the stuff that I play, um, it's definitely got more feel to it now. Whoever's whoever's um mastering it or whatever you're doing a good job <laughs> <laughs> you're fighting a good fight nice <laughs> yeah yeah sweet so what's uh what's up next for you um well i guess i'm um yeah i'm, I'm, I'm moving back to australia so i can focus on um on everything that's coming my way i guess i've got um i've got sort of different um different things, different tasks to complete each month. Like um, Serato have just sent me um, uh, their new plug-in Serato sample. So I've got to do a one-on-one class with someone from Serato and um, just, you know, learn learn the plug-in. And then at the end of the month, I've, um, I've got to show them what I can come up with. Uh, yeah, so just, I guess like each month, I'm just going to be getting sent different um, different products like that and, um, and uh, yeah, and give reviews on them. Give, I think I've got to give live reviews on them at the end of each month, which is awesome because I just like I, I love learning. I love learning um, anything about uh, music production. I nice. think I think they cho- I think they chose the right guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> like it's just it's just that's what I do. Like with my time anyway. I'm just if I'm not writing a track, I'm I'm learning something. I'm doing a course on something. Like yeah, I don't I don't stop. Yeah, same here. There's always that's the exciting thing. Some people say, "It's like, well, I've got another 15 years, 15 years to figure this out," and that's kind of the exciting <laughs> part about. It. There's always something more to learn. You know, you're never yeah. bored. Oh, I love it. It's uh, yeah, I'm ne- I'm never bored. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's hard. It's hard. Like, yeah, my, my girlfriend um hate, hates it because <laughs> I'm just there learning. Just like oh, one more minute, one more minute. Yeah. So yeah, but um. I think I guess we can all relate. All music producers can relate to that. Yeah, my my wife's the same way, but we've been together for so long that it's just part of her life in terms of producing music, working on music. It's yeah. like having a it's like having a mistress on the side. And you're always working <laughs> yeah, on your music. Totally. I got to do a show. I got to I got to work with this band. I got to you know I got to learn this new software. But it it never yeah. ends. But uh, it, it, never, have, it never ends. Do you have any plans to come over to? Uh, to North America, to Montreal to visit. You'd have to come visit uh, Montreal and check out the Lander Studio. Oh, absolutely! I'd love to come over. Um, I mean, I don't know what's in store for me. I'm gonna as soon as I punch out this EP for Basic Records, I'm gonna. I mean, uh, I've got I've got Yusef there um, mentoring me for the next year, so I'm I'm guessing that I'm gonna be 
going to be over in Leeds or uh, Liverpool at one stage. So hopefully I can stop stop in, maybe do a maybe do a Euro World Tour. Nice. Stop in on stop in on the way. I'd love to come see your studios for sure. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, electronic music festivals down here too in Montreal in the summertime. You get the yep. like picnic electronic and stuff like that. You can come by and yeah, and you meet guys the- actually have yeah, you've got really good really really good um, festivals over there actually. Yeah. There's one in the winter too. I'd love to come if, over some. if if you feel like uh, yeah. Igloo Fest, if you feel like freezing your ass off, you could you could come by yeah, in January. <laughs> yeah, sweet. I don't mind. I'm I'm up for it anytime. Nice. So um, book me. <laughs> per- perfect. You could you could crash you could crash here and meet everybody uh, meet everybody up at the up at the office. We have about uh, 75 to 80 people now, I think, on the Lander team, and. Uh, about uh, 12 of those people are actively involved in working on the research and development. And we have uh, six audio engineers that work on my team and a bunch of other research people. So I always get the uh, get get a weird feeling that people think that uh, Lander is just a couple guys in their mom's basement uh, working on a website, but it's actually a huge team of people. And we're constantly changing, evolving, improving yeah. the engine and all the different things that we can do. like. Uh, we, uh, you know, now we have distribution, so you can share your tracks with Spotify, iTunes, everybody else. Oh, cool. cool. So it's uh, a one-stop shop, essentially. But uh, we're working on a few cool things now that people have been asking about for a long time. I can't talk about just now, but there's a little bit of a teaser for what we have in store. But uh, it's definitely exciting. Uh, I wanted to know, actually. Um, yeah, shoot. Is... Uh, is can you choose um, uh, say it, uh, is Lander genre specific? Like um, no. How does it know how to master my being being a tech house track or to or to someone's like you know rock track? Yeah, that's how, do, one how, of, does, how does it know? That's one of the cool things. It's uh, it's part of the old uh, machine learning artificial intelligence. So we basically, we train our yep. engine to be able to know what genre of music is coming in. So basically when it comes in, it's analyzed for a bunch of different features in terms of like frequency, dynamics, loudness, and also for which genre of music it is. So when it comes in, it goes through, you'll see this little circle spinning while your track is being analyzed. Yep. And then we'll be able to decide because the engine knows whether it's a rock track, you know, different types of electronic music, uh, hip hop, you know, classical, jazz, anything. That's awesome. That's really yeah. impressive. Uh, it's pretty crazy. That's really, I mean, really impressive. That's awesome. I've been there yeah. for about four years and it never ceases yeah, to I've, amaze I've, me. Yeah, I've always, I've always wondered that because every time I've had, um, every time I've sent my tracks over to, um, to Lander, they've come back and they've just sounded awesome every time. So, um, yeah, but I've always wondered like how, how that works. But so now I know. <laughs> now that now the world knows it's out there now the world knows yeah <laughs> yeah cool cool uh how can people reach you and check out uh, check out your music and and follow you um so you can get me on soundcloud under taya sounds you can find me on beatport as uh taya um au in brackets uh you can get me on my facebook page taya sounds um or my mix cloud as Taya sounds, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So hit me up. Nice. <laughs> and uh, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, and. Um, I guess I was going to say give give a big shout out to uh, to Beatport and Beats in School and uh, Circus Recording and uh, Native yeah, Instruments. Absolutely. Thanks. And everybody else. Absolutely. Out. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to everyone for. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for getting behind me. Um, all Native Instruments, Serato, Beatport, um, Recordings, Yousef, everyone, Akai. Um, yeah, thanks all, all so much for, for putting the effort in and um, believing in me. And, um, and uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to bring you something big. So thanks Sweet. for having me. And thank you, Lander, by the way. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thanks. How can I forget? <laughs> thanks, and, man. Uh, thanks for having me, bro. I'm going to take a little uh, selfie here uh, with, with us. Here in the studio, you want to give a big smile? <laughs> up? All right. Hey, it's been great spending my morning That's with fun. you, and uh, I wish you all the yeah, best, man. man with everything. You too.
And I can't wait Thank to you, hear what. Thanks uh, for having me. And um, I can't wait to hear yeah, more. Yeah, music. yeah, I've got I've got a fair bit uh, of, of new stuff coming. So yeah, cool. cool. All thanks, right, good buddy. luck. Yeah, well, good luck getting out of Valley. Me, hopefully, I'll be able to come over and see. Yeah, cheers. Fingers crossed. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for having me. Catch up. Anytime. Take care. Woo.